Hello and welcome to Byju's Exam Prep IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 22nd of December 2022. But before we begin, I urge you all to join our official Telegram channel if you have not joined already. Here you will find all the current affairs updates, updates on our new initiatives and much more. So click on the link given in the description box or scan this QR code to join our Telegram channel. Now let us begin and take a look at the first question for today. Guardian ring program seen in news is option A NASA's program to study the Saturn and its complex system of rings and moons in detail, option B JAXA's program to study Jupiter's small inner moons, option C collaborative exercise between some countries and United Nations organizations along with Indian missions abroad to illustrate yoga's unifying power, option D Program of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports to promote Indian sports system by involvement of all generations. What is the context? This article in the PIB today that lists out the initiatives that were taken by the Ayush Ministry in the past one year has a reference to the Guardian Ring program. And hence this question. See, the International Yoga Day 2022 was celebrated with the theme Yoga for Humanity. And during the celebrations, a unique and innovative program called the Guardian Ring was launched. The underlining concept of this program was One Sun, One Earth. As a part of this program, people from all the countries involved welcomed the sun with yoga. And this was done by celebrating the Indian tradition of Surya Namaskar or sun salutation. That is, people performed yoga in 16 different time zones along with the rise of the sun. And this Guardian Ring program was a collaborative exercise between 79 countries, the United Nations organization and also other Indian missions abroad. And the objective of this program was to illustrate yoga's unifying power. Therefore, the right answer to our question here would be option C. Now, talking about the first option that is given here, NASA, European Space Agency and the Italian Space Agency, in an effort to study the Saturn and its complex system of rings and moons, sent a sophisticated robotic spacecraft. And this mission was called as the Cassini mission. Moving on to question number two. Consider the following statements. All the nuclear power plants in India are operated by Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited or NPCIL. Number two. All the nuclear reactors in India are kept under the IAEA safeguards. Number 3. All the nuclear reactors in India use imported fuel. How many of the given statements is or are incorrect? What is the context? This article in the PIB today says that the Russian Nuclear Energy Corporation has offered a more advanced fuel option to the Kudankulam nuclear power plant in Tamil Nadu and hence a question on nuclear reactors. See, nuclear power is one of the largest sources of generating electricity in India. And at present, India has 22 operational nuclear reactors. This all began with the nuclear energy program in India, which was launched under the leadership of Homi J. Baba. Now, coming back to our question, presently, two central public sector enterprises, that is Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited or NPCIL and the Bharatiya Nabikiya Vidyut Nigam Limited or Bhavani are involved in nuclear power generation. So one here becomes incorrect. Now coming to IAEA safeguards. As per the India-US civilian nuclear deal of 2005, India can maintain two types of nuclear reactors. Certain reactors in which we are using the domestic fuel and some reactors in which we use imported fuel. The reactors in which we use domestic fuel can be kept outside the purview of IAEA, that is the International Atomic Energy Agency. But the reactors in which we use imported fuel, they will mandatorily be under IAEA inspection. And at present, India has 22 operational reactors, right? Out of which 14 are under IAEA safeguards, as these use imported fuel. So both 2 and 3 will also be incorrect. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option C. All three statements are incorrect. Do you know which is the largest nuclear power station in India? If yes, let me know in the comment section. Moving on to question number 3. Bikna and Daryapur in West Bengal are famous for which of the following metal crafts? Option A. Koftgari. Option B. Dokra. Option C. Pemparthi. 
Option D, Kamrupi crafts. To answer this question, you need to be aware of the various types of metal crafts and the states that they are popular in. Let us discuss this in some detail. See, Koftgari is a work in which steel is inlaid with gold or silver. And this craft is most famous in Rajasthan. When we take a look at Kamrupi crafts, they are brass and bell metal products of Kamrup in Assam. The name itself gives it away to you. So you can eliminate this. Pemfarthi is a steel metal art which is popular in Telangana's Warangal district. So C becomes incorrect too. Now coming to Dhokra. Dhokra is an ancient technique of producing a non-ferrous metalware by metal casting process. The artisans here follow the process which is believed to be 5000 years old to make figurines, animals and even images of gods. And this follows a lost wax casting process. Also, the Dhokra Dhamar tribes are the main traditional metal smiths of West Bengal and Odisha. The technique of lost wax casting has been named after their tribe and hence it is called as Dhokra metal casting. So the right answer here would be option B, Dhokra. We've picked this question up because of a mention of this metal craft in today's The Hindu newspaper. Moving on to question number 4. Consider the following statements with respect to IDEX initiative. Number 1. It is an initiative by the government launched with the primary objective of promoting India's defence exports. It aims to promote innovation and technology development in defence and aerospace by engaging MSMEs, startups, individual innovators and academia. Number 3. It is funded and managed by Defence Innovation Organisation. How many of the given statements is or are correct? Why this question? This article in the PIB today states that Innovation for Defence Excellence or IDEX has reached a milestone with the signing of its 150th contract. And that is why this question. But what exactly is IDEX? In the year 2018, the Government of India set up the IDEX framework. This was set up to give a boost to India's indigenous or domestic defence sector. Its primary aim is to create an ecosystem that will engage industries including MSMEs, startups and also the others to encourage innovation and technology development in defence as well as aerospace. So what exactly IDEX does is it provides grants or funding to carry out research and development for projects that have good potential for future adoption in Indian defence and aerospace needs. This IDEX is funded and managed by DIO or Defence Innovation Organisation and DIO has been formed as a not-for-profit company by two defence public sector undertakings that is HAL and BEL. So one here would be incorrect. The primary objective of IDEX is innovation and self-sufficiency in domestic defence production and not defence exports. But statement number 2 and 3 are correct as we just discussed. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option B, two statements only. Let me also tell you that as a latest development, IDEX Prime has been launched. This aims to support projects requiring support beyond 1.5 crore up to rupees 10 crore to help the growing startups in defence sector. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2016. What is greenhouse gas protocol? Option A, it is an international accounting tool for government and business leaders to understand, quantify and manage greenhouse gas emissions. Option B, it is an initiative of the United Nations to offer financial incentives to developing countries to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to adopt eco-friendly technologies. Option C, it is an intergovernmental agreement ratified by all the member countries of the United Nations to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to specified levels by the year 2022. It is one of the multilateral Red Plus initiatives hosted by the World Bank. The answer to this question would be option A. The Greenhouse Gas Protocol is an international accounting tool and this is a decade-long partnership between World Resource Institute and World Business Council for Sustainable Development. It works with businesses, governments and also environmental groups around the world to build a new generation of credible and effective programs for tackling climate change. So what this greenhouse gas protocol does is it establishes a comprehensive global standardized framework for measuring and managing emissions. So option A here would be the most appropriate answer.
Moving on to the fact of the day for today, which is R K V Y Raftar. We will discuss this topic in this segment today because there is a mention of R K V Y Raftar in today's P I B article. But let me first begin with the R K V Y scheme, which is the Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana, which was initiated in the year two thousand and seven as an umbrella scheme for ensuring holistic development of agriculture as well as allied sectors. What this scheme did was it incentivized the states to increase public investment in agriculture as well as allied sectors. And later in the year 2017, the government approved for the continuation of the Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana to be renamed as the Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana Remunerative Approaches for Agriculture and Allied Sector Rejuvenation. Also called as R K V Y Raftar, the primary objective of this scheme is to develop farming as a main source of economic activity. What are the other objectives? The other objectives can be listed as promoting agri business entrepreneurship through creation of agriculture infrastructure, risk mitigation in agri businesses, that is, to reduce the risk of farmers by focusing on increasing their income generation through mushroom cultivation, through integrated farming, and also through floriculture, etc. Number three. providing all the states with autonomy and flexibility in making plans as per their local needs number 4 helping farmers in increasing their incomes by encouraging productivity and last but not the least empowering the youth through various skill development innovation and agri based models now talking about the funding This scheme is a centrally sponsored scheme in the ratio of 60 is to 40 that is the government of india and the state share respectively except in the case of northeastern and hilly states where the sharing pattern is 90 is to 10 and for the union territories the grant is 100% as central share now please remember that rk vy raftar covers all the major sectors of agriculture that include crop cultivation and horticulture animal husbandry and fisheries dairy development forest and wildlife food storage and warehousing soil and water conservation and much more that is all for today thank you for being with us keep watching and keep learning